There's a story told of a church out in the Midwest, and it was a day, it was a little warmer than it is today, so they had the windows open in the church, and they were celebrating a funeral. It was a Saturday. And unfortunately, what happened beside the church as they're celebrating this funeral is the farm next door is having an auction. So the whole time during this service, there was a little bit of disruption, but they had to have the windows open because there was no air, and they really needed to, to circulate air through. So the funeral was continuing on until finally they got to the last farewell. And the priest said, now Lord, let your servant go in peace. And through the windows could be heard, going once, going twice. We talk about this because some of us are still in Lent. What happened? We're still in Lent. We're talking about a resurrection. We're talking about new life. It's not a funeral. And so it's very important that we look at this gospel today where Jesus appears. What does he say to them? Shalom Alech. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And Shalom is deeper than just saying, you know, peace, uh, peace on earth or whatever. Shalom Alech means peace be with you here and here and here. It means peace in mind, body, and spirit. That whatever you're afflicted with, whatever you're suffering from, whatever occupies your mind, that you can let it go and be at peace. Now you can imagine the apostles are in the mindset now, Jesus has died, that's it, the end of the story. And yes, there were some resurrection sightings, but where is he now? There's silence. What are we supposed to do? We're locked up in this room. Where are we to go? Well, maybe we should just wait for the next prophet to come along. But he wasn't a prophet. And this was not a resuscitation. You can imagine the, the mindset of the apostles to a certain extent. Only weeks before they saw Lazarus raised from the dead. So now they see Jesus raised from the dead and they might begin to think, well, they're the same things. But they're not. Lazarus was brought back from the dead and continues with his normal life as it was. Now imagine he probably had a bit of a conversion experience. Talk about near-death experience. He gets a second chance. But he still had his same existence. Jesus during his lifetime never passed through walls. Jesus during his, his lifetime never had wounds that you could put your fingers into and they weren't bleeding. So this is not a resuscitation like Lazarus. This is not simply bringing someone back to their former way of life that they might continue. This is a resurrection. A totally different thing that they've never experienced before. Which is why it's so important that we can see Jesus appearing in a room that is locked. So he's passing through walls. That we can see him though that he is flesh. They put their finger in the nail prints, their hand in his side. That in another rendition, he will say, give me something to eat, because a ghost does not eat. We're not talking about a ghost, either. It's a totally new kind of existence. The Greeks will go on to call Christ the Prototokos Nekroi. He is the firstborn of the dead, because he is what we one day shall be. Our soul is reunited with our glorified body, and it's a totally different kind of existence. It's not a resuscitation like Lazarus, where he has to, well, he'll go through pain, he'll get sick again, and eventually die again. There is no more death. And so what Jesus talks to us about today is echoed in the second reading. This reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us new birth, new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. However, some of us might still be living in Lent, that we didn't put the old self away during Lent, that maybe we made our Lenten promises and we failed every single day of Lent to do that. And so we might be saying in our mind, well, I'll wait for the next prophet to come along. 
I'll wait till New Year's, then I'll do it. Or I'll wait till the next Lent, and that Lent will be better. No, I think, I think God in His great mercy knew what He was doing, especially with inspiring John Paul II with Divine Mercy Sunday. Because He thought, just as the disciples, many of my people will experience Lent, they'll experience the glory of Easter, and then they will not believe it true. That they will not have left the old self behind. And so I also need to appear to them as I appeared to the apostles and say, Shalom Alech, peace be with you. And the only way you can have that peace is if you let the old person die. The person of sin, you let that die. And we allow ourselves to be reborn. Reborn in the way that God wants us to be. So today we celebrate also Divine Mercy Sunday. It's a day that the Lord extends this singular gift to us who participate in reconciliation and the Mass, receive communion, and pray for the intentions of the Holy Father and pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. For that, He gives us this free gift that not only are our sins wiped away, but any pain that is connected with that sin. He wants to appear to us like he did to the apostles and say, peace be with you. And he says it almost in a subjunctive way, may peace be with you. Because as strangely as it sounds, there are some things that God cannot do. He cannot force peace upon us. He cannot force a peace of mind and body and spirit. We have to want it. And we have to accept it. And we can do that. So, if we're still living in Lent, I have a suggestion of something to give up. Give up the old self. And accept the rebirth that Christ offers us with the resurrection. It's not going back to the former way of life. It's a new life entirely. That we are not a people who are mourning the death of Christ, but we are a people redeemed by his blood who rejoice in his resurrection.